announcement about two weeks ago, said that he thought that uh, the state's 1,700 cars, about half of them would be sold at auction. Do you think you will reach this number? We hope to reach that goal. Uh, it will not be done overnight. We're going to have to start pooling cars out in the state in the coming weeks and months, and this is going to take a lot of study and a lot of effort, but uh, we're still shooting for that goal. Yes, sir. The state's carpool has been in operation, as I understand it, almost a week now. How have things been going? It's been going extremely well. We've had a few uh, problems, but none that could not be resolved rather swiftly, and we're very pleased with the first week of the operation. Have you had any complaints from people in the state departments who have lost their automobiles? Yes, a few, of course, uh, were reluctant to give up their automobiles, but for everyone who had to give up one and complain, there must have been 25 or 30 who didn't have one, who didn't have one to give up, and they applauded it, I think. About how many automobiles have been taken up? Approximately 260 as of today. What will happen to them? Well, uh, approximately 100 of the later model vehicles will be pooled here at the, at the lot uh, for use by the state employees. The remainder will be sold at public auction. Mr. Ingram, are there any cars that are being held in reserve, so to speak, for the contingency that maybe some cars have been taken up from department heads or people in departments that might really need them? No, we have not done that, George. We feel that we have a, a sufficient number of automobiles in the pool to handle almost any emergency, and I don't think it will be necessary to hold any in reserve, so to speak. We're going to sell those that we don't pool. Well, do you think uh, there will have to be some adjustments made on those who have been allocated automobiles or left with their own cars? In what manner? What sort of adjustments, sir? I'm not following you now. Well, what I was wondering in case that, uh, uh, well, a car had been taken up from someone who at a later date, it may really be discovered they did need a car. Oh, to... certainly. We are trying to be as reasonable and as understanding as we can in the administration of this thing. Uh, I think the people who've been involved with it thus far would concede this. We've gone out of our way and been over backwards to be reasonable, and if, if a case is presented which indicates an employee is entitled to a car and needs a car, then he'll have one. We're hopeful that the court there will be responsive to the uh, evidence which it will have before it, uh, uh, will be responsive to the wishes of the people. Uh, of course, again, I, I'm making a pitch for the plan that will be urged upon the court by the Mobile School Board and by interested citizens there, the Freedom of Choice plan that we, uh, uh, though we didn't like it at first, have become uh, have come to believe is the best way for handling this problem, that it's the most democratic, that it is the uh, one plan that uh, assures us of continued public support for education in Alabama, particularly in view of our plans to go forward next year with, a, with a, hopefully a, a great new program in Alabama, an expansion of our facilities and bringing us more in line with uh, the national average in education matters. What would you, you recommend as a permanent solution for Montgomery's emergency room problem? I have gone through this for many, many years. The, the emergency room situation has been a problem, has been a part of my problem for many, many years. And I feel strongly that the solution to the emergency room problem would be a staffed uh, salaried position. These would be full-time people? That's right, 24-hour coverage. What would their actual duties be? I would suggest very strongly that the doctors who would take this emergency coverage would be salaried resident physicians in an institution with no other interest by the emergency room work. Mm -hmm. Would you have each hospital run its own emergency room or do this on a rotating basis such as being done now? It seems like the doctors in the city of Montgomery like this arrangement of uh, coverage 
uh, is each hospital recovering for themselves. And I think if, if we could be uh, the fourth hospital in the city and uh, have uh, the doctors consider us as one of the hospitals giving emergency treatment, I think it would be to the satisfaction of everybody, provided we can get coverage from our medical staff for the fourth night. Mm -hmm. This would be a still rotating on That's every right. four night basis. Mm -hmm. You said that one of Montgomery's big hospital problems is lack of, <clears throat> of community uh, planning. What do you mean by this? I think uh, the reason why we're having so much difficulty in Montgomery is because we do not have an area-wide planning program or committee. If we had an area-wide planning committee, we would not have empty beds in one area of the city and uh, too many beds or, or full capacity in another institution. If we could get the physicians and the people in the community at large to be interested in the community and its needs rather than in one institution or another, uh, I think it would solve many, many problems that we've got today. Because bed-wise, if you're counting beds, I think we've got enough beds in the city of Montgomery. Do you, you've watched the problem here in Montgomery for uh, more than 15 years now. Do you think the city's ever going to uh, do anything about this community planning? I think they're working towards it, but uh, they have not come up with an area-wide planning committee as such yet.